see. We're hoping how long that, that will last. We're hoping that you are welcome to our Westway Q and A. <laughs> At least we can see ourselves this time. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm Mike, and this is Joe. We're a couple of the pastors here um, at Westway. And every Tuesday we do a short video. Today will probably be a little brief. Well, usually it's about 45 minutes. <laughs> it was I meant to be a short video when I started. I think we can make it shorter than that today. <laughs> um, yeah. So usually what we do is talk a little bit about the last Sunday's message mm -hmm. and the questions that we have had. Some we didn't get any questions this week. We haven't got a whole lot of questions. <laughs> recently you were using um, that word usually loosely yeah, yeah. maybe i should have said previously yeah <laughs> so so when we don't have questions we we talk about the the message and mm -hmm. how that connects to our everyday life and what we need to do to follow up on that and sometimes yeah. lead into the next thing uh, so I wasn't even in the room um, <laughs> this sunday so I didn't hear the message um, I was back with some of our third, fourth, and fifth graders. Um, we have restarted our children's ministry on Sunday mornings um, for a couple different groups that mm -hmm. hadn't been meeting previously. Yeah. Uh, which, by the way, we still need more adults to volunteer to do that. Yes. Um, partially because I'm not going to miss every Sunday. <laughs> And I don't want to ask anybody else to miss every Sunday. Right. So right. we're we're looking for people that can rotate um, about once a month to mm -hmm. lead a group of um, so we're taking some time over the next several weeks to do some training. Bethany's leading one of those. I'm leading one group of those. Uh, we're kind of training on the job, so to speak. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, if you can touch base with Bethany or I, we can get you scheduled to come in and do a week where you don't really have to do anything but observe and see how we get things done, uh, see how the interaction is with the kids before you're just set there on your own. And when we're not going to set anybody just Right. Here you go. Good luck. Um, so uh, we definitely want to go through that process with people who volunteer to help with our children's ministries. Uh, but we do need more people for that. So, yeah. so if you're interested, us. having said all of that, if you have any interest at all of working with kids, um, I would say talk to us about it. Find out more about it. Yeah. Uh, stop in and and uh, and say, hey, I heard you and and. Um, Tell me more. And Mike can tell you, Bethany can tell you, I can tell you, uh, I can tell you who to t talk to to find out more. <laughs> yeah. All of so that. I wasn't in intending this as a recruiting. <laughs> Mike, a good time. All for that it. to say, I was not in the room Sunday morning. I didn't hear the message. So would you summarize the message? Well, yeah. We have been going through a series. John's been, been leading us through a series um, called Kingdom 2020. And um, in that series, kind of the recurring theme is um, what really matters in our lives. And um, we've, we've been talking about the election and all the, the things that go around an election here at the, in the United States. Um, and how that there, there are different opinions and points um, even within our congregation. And so somebody, their person that they voted for didn't get elected. Um, but there's probably somebody that they voted for. Well, I didn't, shouldn't say didn't get elected. Might not have been elected. <laughs> um, and, and, and there may be some that they will be. Um, and so how do we handle that? Um, what do we do now when uh, the election is finally decided and all the votes are or what? Um, and what if it ends up not being the person we voted for? Or what if it ends up being the person we voted for? <laughs> How do we respond to life as it continues to go on? And um, how does a Christian uh, respond to that? One of the things that John mentioned too was 
was um, with those differing opinions, our desire is that we can sit down and visit with each other about our differences and come away loving each other just as much as we did before we started the conversation. Wait, or so more. you can talk about differences yeah. without screaming at each other? Yeah, huh. yeah. And, um, and, and so God's plan for us is that we be in community and fellowship with one another and love one another. Um, and even if they see things from a little different viewpoint than we do and, and feel strongly about things um, in a different way than us, um, it's okay to say we agree to disagree and continue to love each other. Yeah. So here's the good news. Um, <laughs> if, if the election doesn't turn out the way you want it to, uh, or if the election does turn out the way you want it to, Mm -hmm. You are still free to love your neighbor. Yeah. yeah. So go do that. That's what's next. And that's what yeah. will make a difference in the lives of your neighbor. Yeah. More than who sits in the White House, more than who sits in the House of Representatives or in the Senate. What makes a difference in the life of your neighbor is you loving your neighbor and being an ambassador of Christ and entreating them to be reconciled to God in whatever way they need to be. And, yeah. and we model that by loving people regardless of their differences. And there is no government on the planet that can stop us from doing that. So the, the, the people down the street that have been flying the flag for the person that I didn't vote for, <laughs> it's not a good idea for me to go vandalize their house or um, throw eggs on their house or whatever because they didn't they didn't vote the way I did probably not <laughs> and God would not be happy about me standing up for what I believe in <laughs> well I think God is happy when we stand up for what we believe in but I also think that we need to be careful how we define what we believe in yeah. and how we stand up for what we believe in. Our ultimate yeah. example, remember, is Jesus. And we're supposed to have the same attitude that he had. Yeah. Paul said in Philippians, who being in very nature God did not consider equality with God something to be held on to. Yeah. But he humbled himself and he emptied himself and became one of us. Yeah, a servant. So yeah. me standing up for my rights is not the same thing as me standing up for what I believe in. Uh, yeah. Jesus laid aside every right that he had as the Son of God and humbled himself to become a helpless infant mm -hmm. born in a very difficult time period in a very difficult place mm -hmm. in an occupied nation where he had no say in who was in charge of the government. Yeah. And yet he still managed to love his neighbor. Yeah. And set the example and set the bar for us in that. And he sacrificed everything in order to love his neighbor. And that's the example that we're supposed to follow. Yeah. So, so how do I cope with the sinking feeling that I have if my hero, if you will, <laughs> the one that I thought was going to fix it all, um, wasn't voted in? Um, how do I cope with those feelings? Get a better hero. <laughs> All right. Yeah. And I, I say that bluntly, a little bit tongue in cheek, but in all honesty, yeah. if, if we can't cope with our candidate not getting elected, then we have made an idol out of our candidate. Yeah. And yeah. that is not a position that any candidate be belongs in. Um, yeah. I know you said your hero, <laughs> um, get a better hero. Yeah. Because there is one hero available who will never fail, mm -hmm. who will never abandon us, will never forsake us. And he is worth standing up for he's worth giving our life to um he is worth everything yeah and no one else is yeah yeah so 
and again, I, I come at this from a fairly politically independent space. So I know other people have a, a different level of struggle with that. Mm -hmm. But I would say, um, align yourself with Jesus. Team up with others when, when right. that's needed. Right, right. Well, but don't give your loyalty absolutely to any political candidate. Yeah, yeah. Because they are not deserving of absolute loyalty. Jesus is. I like the way you said, align yourself with Jesus. And part of aligning ourselves with Jesus is getting together with other people who are aligning themselves with Jesus. That's his body, that's, that's Christ. Here that we have today, the body of Christ, is the church, the, the Christians. And in the his people, yeah. to do. within lining with him yeah. come follow me that's what we need to do today we need yeah. to come and follow Jesus with people who are not like us who Jesus has also called to come and follow him yeah and let him take care of the differences. Yep. Uh, you, what you just said, up to give a plug for uh, uh, a Bible study that we are just finishing up on Monday nights that exposes and talks about what you just talked about in such a wonderful way. It's called The Chosen. Mm -hmm. and, and the video that they have out, the, the series of videos that they have out, really highlight this very thing. God chose us, and even the ones that he chose to be the ones to help start his kingdom here on earth were so diverse, yeah. and not the people that I would have chosen if I was putting together a team. <laughs> right. um, and, and they had tons of differences in their lifestyles, and um, this video series does a really good job of, of taking what we know in scripture and then adding enough to it to try and build a character around it, but not changing in any way what the scripture is saying uh, about those individuals. Um, and, and, and so read the gospels and think about those individuals that hung out with Christ and that he asked to come follow him and think about the lifestyles that they must have lived in. Think about the government that they were under at the time. Yeah, I think we need to not take for granted the the fact of where we are in history. Yeah. Uh, there, like on the big scope of things, there has been very little time where <clears throat> yeah. the common man has any say whatsoever in who is in charge of their country. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a pretty rare thing yeah. yeah, in history. And even in the world today, to varying degrees, a lot of people have no influence over anything that happens politically. Yeah, And we can argue about you know the electoral college and popular vote and all of that. But the bottom line is we do have some say um, in in who our leaders are on a local level, yeah. on a state level, and even on a national level to some extent. Yeah. That has rarely been the case for anyone. Yeah. And so when we collectively, or when we personally don't get the leader that we collectively
to the Oval Office. And so to me, the answer to the question So thou might and love your neighbor as yourself. And um, the way we know how to do that is through this. And so getting together and discussing this is the best kind of discussion you can have over a cup of coffee. Sure. <laughs> and it's interesting how often when... But I don't like coffee. Yeah, well, you all <laughs> drink a little... Amazing to me how God... what really matters in yeah. life and um, in family and, and when we go and study it and talk about it together. <clears throat> yeah, and I think too that sometimes when we have on around us, mm -hmm. uh, often what we're really doing is projecting the problem that's within us and trying to deal with the stuff outside of us without dealing with the stuff that's inside right, of us. Right. And that's where I think this allowing is so scripture to shape yeah. our lives and allowing God to work in our lives mm -hmm. um, keeps us from just sinking into the chaos. Yeah. Um, when, when I have dealt with what's going on in my heart and soul, the chaos around me isn't so influential. I think that's what Paul talked about in Ephesians when yeah. he talked about growing in maturity yeah. so that you're not tossed around by the winds and yeah. waves. Um, that has to do with allowing God to do the work in my life to straighten things out. Uh, we talk about righteousness to bring me into a right relationship with Him. Mm -hmm. And when I'm in right relationship with the creator of the universe, however much the universe seems out of whack, God can still and is still drawing me near to him in a way that helps me cope mm -hmm. and figure out what's next. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. so, yeah, whether you're celebrating uh, the state of our country or lamenting or... Or indifferent, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, because the the truth also is, you know, as many people as voted for Trump or as many people voted for Biden, there were still a lot of people that didn't vote at all. Mm -hmm. And to, in some ways, those people maybe are just saying, yeah, yeah, whatever. And in some ways, we're along for the ride, and. whether you voted or voted one way or the other, our call is to trust God and to love our neighbor. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and we're still free to do that no matter how all the recounts and yeah. whatever else happens, no matter how it turns out mm -hmm. um, today and tomorrow and in December when results are certified and in January when there's an inauguration, we are still free to love our neighbor. Mm -hmm. And that's what will make a difference in the world. Yep. Yep. We want to express our condolences to the Coop family. Um, and I know that most of you have probably heard already that Shane passed away yesterday morning and has gone to be with Christ. And you know what? That's what matters. <laughs> And for this last year, Shane has been um, has been struggling with cancer, mm -hmm. and we're we're excited for him that he's no longer struggling. Yeah, yeah. that he is free and yeah. full. Um, I like the way Miranda said it in her post. Uh, we celebrate it, and we're devastated by it. Right, <laughs> and it's that bittersweet mixed emotions, and and through it all, we know that God is with us. 
and that he is with God and that we have that assurance because of, of, of what so um, we praise God for Shane and um, are praying uh, for the family the Coop family and for Westway's family um, uh, because Shane has been a part of us here for so many years all of his life pretty much I mean there's a few years where he went and ministered other places and went to college but uh, even during college he came here part of the time and and so um, what an amazing man and and amazing influence he's had in our community and we love him dearly and uh, love the family dearly and want to uh, continue to be with them through this yeah I remember junior high when I was in junior high Shane was in the high school youth group yeah and we did a musical and um, yeah that was my first memory of Shane that was 30 years ago yeah and getting to work with Shane for the last 15 years uh, I think of what a blessing it has been mm -hmm. uh, to be able to be a part of the worship culture that he has worked to develop here at Westway mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. even in the last year yeah. as he struggled his his statement continually has been God is still God, and I'm yeah. still going to praise Him. Yep. And that's that's an that's example of someone <laughs> who has sat with God and allowed Him to work inside of his life, mm -hmm. so that the garbage that's happening outside of him, or in his case, physically inside, inside physically. of him, <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> doesn't just cause us to sink into the chaos. Yeah. But still, is able to be used by God to create something beautiful. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, and, and and to influence those around him. Uh, yeah, yeah, God and I think was able to use him in that way. We need to. We acknowledge the loss and we grieve deeply our own loss. Yeah. But at the same time, we celebrate the victory that Christ has. Yeah, over death, yeah. because this isn't the end for Shane. Oh, um, it's a beginning. This is the beginning for. <laughs> eternity yeah, yeah and and we have that to look forward to yep. as well yeah as much as it hurts to miss him now and here uh, we know that that will be exceedingly replaced with the joy of reunion um, in eternity yeah and so as as we get information as the, the um, plans are made for a memorial service and uh, and we get that information we will pass that on to you and um, uh, thank you so much for your support and uh, for the way that you have shared your love with his family and with the body here and um, we we really do appreciate that and covet that if you will yeah. And we've been talking about being in the kingdom. This is, this is a great example of what's most important and what we should do next and what we should look forward to and live our lives for. Yeah. So um, be careful out there. The number of cases of COVID continue to be high. I thought you were going to yeah. say something about the snow and being slick and icy. And like, <laughs> it's going away. It's <laughs> yeah. No, we, we know that, that they, uh, we, we continue to lift up the, the health care workers and first yeah. responders and, and those that are taking care of, of, the, of the sick. We know a number of people now who have COVID. And uh, we, we pray for you all. Um, we pray for those that you don't have it, that you won't get it. Uh, but that if you will, that uh, you will heal quickly and, and God will do what he does in our bodies to fight those viruses that come around and um, that we can be over that soon. And I'm praising God. They've, they've talked about a cure out there, a, vir a vaccine that yeah. over 90% effective is what they're saying. And so praying that that gets out and gets used quickly. And at, for our leaders, um, as they continue to go through this, and make decisions, um, we, we continue to lift them up. Uh, one of the scriptures John shared Sunday morning was uh, pray for those in authority. And that's all the word was used there. Um, and so. <laughs> <laughs> Just my favorite ones, all of them. Yeah. <laughs> so 
Thank you for joining us today. Uh, sorry about the little glitch at the beginning. We couldn't see ourselves. We had no idea if we were live or not. Well, and I think it's been it's been freezing up here and there. So if you see the glitches cutting in and out, uh, we apologize for that. Yeah. Um, not sure what all's going on. Yeah. Maybe just a lot of traffic, but yeah. So God bless. Have a good week, and. Um, Hopefully we'll see you either Sunday or um, on another Tuesday. <laughs> see ya.